Uh, good morning, WA. I uh, just want to uh, just have a chat about the Human Rights Act 2004 from the ACT. I want to just uh, want to be just reading a few things out that actually relate to this whole COVID. Uh, Cam. Good man, buddy. Good man, Cam. Program and all that kind of stuff. And um, just from the preamble, I just want to start with the preamble first. And in the preamble, the reason why this act was written, it says in, on point five, it says the act encourages individuals to see themselves and each other as holders of rights and as responsible for upholding the human rights of others. And that's what this whole two years has been about. It's about us actually upholding this law, standing up for the human rights of others for other peoples with regards to all the mandates and everything that's gone on with them that has been unlawful. And um, our responsibility in our voice is not a voice of dissent, it's not disinformation, it's not conspiracy, it's not anti-vax. Rubbish, that's a load of lies. But our voice is that we have a responsibility, every one of us, everyone in the community has the responsibility to know their own human rights. And you have a responsibility to stand up for those who don't know them. And that's why we're here. That's as, this is our purpose. And today in the city, as I, write, as I speak out, our responsibility is, as the citizens is to subdue what is wrong and what is unlawful. That is our responsibility. And that's what we do. That's the first thing I want to say today. I'm going to subdue the lies and the hypocrisy and the narrative of the government and the narrative of the government agenda. And I want to subdue that with authority today. And every one of us here are going to release our authority to subdue that lie because the truth is, the truth is we are being responsible we are standing up for the human rights of every person. I'm going to go through a few of these uh, things now so that you might understand. Sec Section 8, recognition of equality before the law. Everyone has the right to enjoy his or her rights without distinction or discrimination of any kind. That's without any kind of discrimination. So that when you're told by the federal government that you don't have to be mandated, you don't have to be part of this medical trial, this scientific trial, when the federal government said that, but then Mark McGowan and the premiers in every state began to say it's mandatory. They began to discriminate against people in the WA community by saying you can't work unless you take this vaccination. You can't travel if you don't take this vaccination. You can't go for coffee. You can't go and see your newborn daughter or son in a hospital unless you're mandated. Well, I want you to know clearly, emphatically, that that is a discrimination of our human rights. And that's what Mark McGowan's done. That's what he's done. That's part of what he's done. Everyone is equal before the law and is entitled to the equal protection of the law without any discrimination, without any discrimination. In particular, everyone has the right to equal and effective protection against uh, uh, discrimination on any ground. There's no ground for what Mark McGowan's done. It's unlawful. The right to life. Everyone has the right to life in particular. No one may arbitrarily be deprived of life. And I want you to understand this today, that these directions and orders that Mark McGowan and, and the Chief Health Medical Officer and the emergency, these orders and directions are arbitrary. They are not the law. They are only temporary directions and orders. And I don't mind that they've done, I don't mind that they want to do these things, 
but I do mind when they say that those directions include coercion and, and uh, intimidation and discrimination, where those orders and directions begin to say to the public, you can't work unless you're jabbed. Do you understand that? They've got no grounds. Part 3.10 says protection from torture and cruelty, inhumane or degrading treatment. No one, no one may be tortured or treated or punished in a cruel, inhumane or degrading way. I want you to think about what I'm saying today. I want to think you about the degrading that people have been put under. Can you imagine, can you imagine these uh, directions and orders being told to a family man who has a mortgage. He has a mortgage and he has children to feed. And in his own volition, he doesn't want to be part of this experimentation. He doesn't want to take these medical trial drugs into his body, but he's forced by the government to take those drugs. Otherwise, he won't be able to pay his mortgage and feed his family. And that's why we're here today, that's why we're still here today. We want to give you this message. Privacy and reputation. Everyone has the right not to have his or privacy, uh, privacy, family, home or correspondence interfered with, with uh, unlawful or arbitrary or arbitrarily. And not to have his or reputation unlawfully attacked. So what I want to make clear to you today is these directions and orders are arbitrary laws. Why? Why are they arbitrary? Because some personal agenda, some private matter, some government matter has determined these things necessary. They've determined them to be necessary, but they've rejected every, every other form of law. That's why it's arbitrary. It's uncontrolled. It's unrestricted. And that's why they've got away with what they've done, and they've done it by intimidation and coercion, by untrue representation. The freedom of thought, point 14 says the freedom of thought, conscience, religion, and belief. Everyone has the right to the freedom of thought. I don't mind if the government wants to think that way, I don't care. That's all right, they have that freedom. Or well, the freedom of the teachers who are now teaching our children about transgender issues and whatever. They can have their free thought because that's the right that they have. But then to say anybody who wants to have our kind of free thought that we are dissenting or it's disinformation or it's conspiracy. Well, the law of these human rights that were written here in Australia says freedom of thought, freedom of conscience, freedom of religion and belief. Everyone has that right. No one may be coerced in any way that would limit his or her freedom to, a, have to adopt a religion or a belief. If I have a belief about my own body, my own bodily autonomy, if I have a belief about the sanctity of my body, what I put in it, the medications that I take, the doctor prescribes a medication, I don't have to take that medication. I may listen to his voice, but I have the final authority. I have the final authority. Freedom of expression. Everyone has the right to hold opinions without interference. That means today I'm allowed to hold these opinions, these opinions, these words that not only belong to me, they belong to every heart. It's belonged to tens of thousands of people who have been marching on our streets over the last two years. Tens of thousands of people are holding their own personal opinions about these medical interventions, these trial drug programs. We have the freedom to uh, have our own opinion without interference. Everyone has the right to the freedom of expression. This right includes the freedom to seek, to receive, or to impart information like I'm doing this morning. 
and ideas. Freedom to have ideas of all kinds, whether they're religious. They can have them whether they want to speak them orally or in writing or in print or in art or in any other way chosen by that person, him or her. The freedom of expression. No exemption. And no exemptions were given on religious grounds. No exemptions were given on religious grounds or previous uh, medical history. Everything was swept under the carpet. People weren't able to, they were able to go to their doctor and the doctors were just shut down. Everything went to some other medical board, APRA or somewhere else. And they were deciding, they were deciding these things. There was no exemptions and yet the human rights law written by our own government says that we have those rights. We have those exemptions if that's what we believe. The Jehovah's Witnesses don't have blood transfusions and if their children not, needs that, that, that child will die without it because the parents say so. Well, the Mormons might have this and the Islams might have that. They got that religious freedom. And there was no exceptions. There was no exceptions on the ground of personal thought or conscience. There was no freedom to the ideas that I think about and the ideas that I profess. I'm not asking you to take on what I believe, but I do need the ability and the right to be able to express them and to exercise them as a sovereign human being without tyranny. Three thousand years ago, King of Israel, Paul Solomon said, I saw under the sun, I saw this under the sun, I saw this working. In every place where man was, I saw in the place of judgment that wickedness, was, that wickedness was there. And in the place of righteousness, iniquity was there. Judgment, a verdict. The verdict. He, saw, he said that I saw in that, in that place, in those places, whether it be the parliament, whether it be in the executive bodies of our governments, whether it be in this courthouse, whether it be in the local church, whether it be in the heart of every individual man and woman, it is a place where a verdict can be expressed and can be sounded out. And when Solomon said those words, Solomon, thought, Solomon said, wrong was there. That's what he was saying, wrong was there. Instead of the place of right judgment, wrong was there. Instead of the place of moral and civil justice and equity, wrong was there. And what Solomon said about wrong was, wrong is defined as an invasion of another's right to his damage. That's what it is, that's the definition of wrong. And in my opinion, Scott Morrison and uh, Greg Hunt, Atagi, APRA, the TGA, the Premier's Council, the Council that they, every, and every other parliament has come and in, in, implemented all these things, it's been a wrong action because it's been an invasion of our right. It's an invasion of our right to say that unless you have a mandatory vaccination, you can't work. That's an invasion of my right, and it's wrong. And I want to declare that publicly. And I want to subdue that wrong today. This community of people and everyone else, the, the 10,000 people who just signed a signature regarding this extension of these mandatory vaccination the sorry, the state of emergency. But what I want to say today, ladies and gentlemen, our complaint is a resistance. 
against the invasion of the wrong made against every individual person and our human right. The invasive wrong declared by the WA Parliament under Mark McGowan made against the WA public by public directions and orders meted out and purposed by discrimination, coercion, intimidation, fines and by untrue representation of his public office. I want you to know Mark McGowan is just a man, but I want you to know something. The office of Mark McGowan has authority and that authority has been released. I want to tell you Dr Andrew Roberts is just a man. That's all he is. He's just a man. But that office that he has has power and they are releasing that power. And our complaint, our complaint is against the invasion of our wrong, the invasion of wrong against our rights. And if you were to take the time to read the uh, Emergency Services Act 2005, you will see, you will see, in, in, you will see, you will see the level of arbitrary power that has been released where it actually says no other law, no other law has, uh, has a right to operate while the state of emergency or certain directions and orders. So every human right, every commonwealth right that we have as people, but we don't have to be vaxxed. Every right is shut down. You need to read that act for yourself. You'll see it round section 70, 71, 72, etc. You'll see it for yourself. Where they declare all other law is subdued to the arbitrary law. What is it a private matter? Is it a private matter? Is it, the, is it a private matter of the government, Mark McGowan and those in league with Mark McGowan? Is it a private matter, is it? Is that what it is? To be able to say such things and implement such laws. All of these forms of statutory law mentioned as in the Commonwealth Constitution of Australia 1901, the Criminal Act 1900, the Human Rights Act 2004, Workplace Relations Laws, the Nuremberg Code and other international laws. I'll tell you where they were all swept under a carpet. They were all railroaded. They were all railroaded for an agenda. They were all railroaded for arbitrary directions and orders given by a government who were putting drugs in you that are unsafe. They were putting drugs in you that weren't fully tested. They weren't fully proved. In fact, Pfizer tried to shut down the FDA. They, Pfizer tried to shut down all the side effects. Over 1,200 side effects. They tried to get the Supreme Court to shut down that evidence so they could close the evidence up for 75 years so that you wouldn't know it. And the Supreme Court in America told them they had to release all of the side effects. And I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, those side effects, they're not adverse to reactions. It's not a headache and a sore shoulder. People are dying of these vaccines. People are getting myocarditis. They're dying of blood clots. The 1,200 side effects that that Pfizer company knew what they were doing when they released it. They knew what they were injecting into people. And our governments, whether they're complicit or ignorant, they released those uh, vaccines on the community. I want you to know that today. And all of these other laws, workplace relationships, where were they? Where were all the workplace relations laws? Where were all the civil liberties? Where was the Australian Commonwealth Constitution? Where was it? It was in a rubbish bin. That's where it was. Just in a rubbish bin. Until they sought out this agenda, their personal agenda. When this, this is section uh, 109 from the Commonwealth Constitution of Australia. 
when a law of a state is inconsistent with the law of the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth law shall prevail. That law must be made subject. So what's that mean? So what I'm trying to say today, these arbitrary uh, orders and directions that the government has released, they were not subject to the Commonwealth law. They just chose to do what they felt like. And I'll tell you, in six months, in a year, Fauci's on the run now. All of these people, they're going to be judged for what they've done. They're going to be judged. I want to paraphrase this. I want to paraphrase section 109. When a state law or arbitrary directions are enforced, described as temporary guiding measures made under the WA State Parliament that cause restrictions upon the public, a restriction designated as a public direction or public order those public directions and orders cannot oppose or contradict or be inconsistent with any established law of the Commonwealth Constitution of Australia, nor the Criminal Code, nor Human Rights Act 2004, nor the Nuremberg Code. And if they oppose or contradict or are inconsistent with established laws, then they are unlawful. They are unlawful directions and orders. That's what they are. That's what I say. And I have a right as a citizen to say so. I have a right to voice my concerns. I am obeying the Human Rights Act, which says I have a responsibility to stand up for the human rights, not my own, but for everybody else. Uh, just have a good day, and please consider what I've said today. Have a good day, Australia. Bye for now. Yeah.